Hello people of the world, my name is Paul and I will be helping you learn how to complete the square today. So completing the square is a technique that we use to solve quadratic equations. So a quadratic equation in standard form, we have some coefficient a multiplied by x squared plus some coefficient b multiplied by x plus some coefficient c and in standard form that equals zero. And so completing the square is a method that we can use to solve one of these types of equation. And by solving it, I mean that we can find the x values that make this type of statement true. So for our example, the quadratic equation that we are going to be looking at is going to be x squared minus 8x minus 153. And then we're setting that equal to 0. So the very first step in completing the square is we need our a coefficient to be a 1. And in our case, um, a is 1. 1 times x squared is just x squared. So we have a coefficient of 1 for our x squared term, so we're good there. So now that we have that a coefficient to be 1, then we can move on to step 2. So step 2, what we do is we look at the b term. So in our case, b happens to be this negative 8 here. So we'll just go ahead and just write b equals negative 8. So the trick with completing the squares, we have this x squared term plus some bx term, and then we've got some other value for c over here. But what we want to do is we want to look at the x squared and the x term here, and we want to add something to that so that we can end up with something to this nature, x plus some number, I'm just going to call it h, and uh, we can square it. And I just picked this uh, letter randomly here. You can have this be whatever you want. I just am referring to h as just some number. So the idea is if we can find some square, then we can make it into something of this form. And I'll explain this a little bit more when we get there. So let's go ahead and just kind of get rid of that. We'll see that again really shortly here. And so the trick with completing the square is we want to take our b term and we want to divide it by 2. And then the result of that, we are going to square it. So we're going to take negative 8 and divide it by 2. And so negative 8 divided by 2 equals negative 4. And so that is our b divided by 2 is our negative 4 here. So then we just want to take that negative 4 and we're going to square it. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So that means that negative 4 squared is 16. So now the trick with the 16 is we go ahead and use that, but what we do is we rewrite the x squared minus 8x. So we're rewriting the x squared and the x part right here. And then what we do is we add that 16, we add that squared term, this is why it's called completing the square. We add that squared term, the 16, right here. And we keep all this stuff on the left-hand side, and then everything else we want to move to the right-hand side. So right now we have negative 153 on the left-hand side, so we can move that to the right-hand side by adding 153 to both sides. So after doing that, what we do is we just simply write equals 153, but then we're missing something because we've added 16 on the left-hand side, but not on the right-hand side. So to balance our equation out, we need to add that square term on the right-hand side as well. So now the cool thing about this is, if you remember just uh, probably a minute ago or so, I said that the left-hand side is going to be something in this form right here. So h is just some number, and it turns out that h is equal to your b term divided by 2. And we've already figured that out right here. Negative 8 was our b term, divide that by 2 is negative 4. So that means that the left-hand side is equal to x minus 4, since minus 4, negative 4, was our b divided by 2, b divided by 2 right here. So this is x minus 4 squared. So that's the same thing as x minus 4 times x minus 4, like that. And then if we were to FOIL this, we would get x times x is x squared and then x times negative 4 would be minus 4x, and then we do that once again, negative 4 times x right here, so minus 4x, and then the last two terms, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, 
and then negative 4x minus 4x. This is our negative 8x. So we have our x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I went ahead and just showed you guys that this right here, x minus 4 squared, is the same thing as x squared minus 8x plus 16. So let's go ahead and just kind of get rid of some of that nonsense right there. So I got some more room to write here. Let's just go ahead and just erase this guy right there. That's real pretty. Wee. Okay. So let's go ahead and just uh, fix this here. Okay. So now that we know that uh, the left-hand side is equal to x minus 4 squared, and then we know that 153 plus 16 is equal to 169. So then if we were to take the square root of both of these sides and take the square root right here, then the squ something squared under the square root is just whatever is under there. So this is x minus 4 is equal to, and then we actually need a plus or minus on this side, plus or minus the square root of 169. And the square root of 169 happens to be 13. So then that means that if we were to add 4 to the left and the right hand side, we have x is equal to 4 plus or minus 13. So then that gives us the two results x is equal to 4 plus 13 and x is equal to 4 minus 13. So 4 plus 13 equals 17 and 4 minus 13 is equal to negative 9. So then our two solutions are x equals 17 and x equals negative 9. And so if we were to plug these two answers back into this original equation right here, we would find that both of these satisfy this equation. So 17 squared minus 8 times 17 minus 153 equals 0. And we will also find that negative 9 squared minus 8 times negative 9 minus 153 also equals 0. So anyway, that was uh, an example on how to complete the square. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.